What's up guys, Luke the Welder here, and today we're gonna to be fixing the ramp on this truck. This truck is used to pick up and deliver golf carts. We have to get this truck back on the road ASAP. So get comfortable as my brother Justin and I tag team this job and take this ramp from looking like this to looking like this. We're gonna take you on a journey through our entire process. And who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. It's Monday morning and already pushing almost 90 degrees. So we decided to pitch a tent to get ahead of the mid-afternoon heat and have it made in the shade. After assessing the damage, we have decided that it will be much faster just to cut the whole piece off and start fresh. But the first thing we gotta do is unload all the gear from the truck, starting with the TIG welding torch. Justin is being very delicate with this torch because at the end of it, there's a ceramic cup, which we don't want to break. Now he's going to start to unload the ground cable. The entire truck bed is made out of unpainted aluminum, so we can put the ground clamp anywhere nearby and we shouldn't have a problem welding. We can also use a secondary raw metal clamp to relocate it. I personally love these retractable extension cord reels. They help make cleaning up after the job is done fast and easy. We are trained professionals and don't use a guard on our angle grinders at our own risk. Please follow all safety precautions. Oh my God. That's nice what spaghetti on. western kind of is that? Yeah, that's spaghetti western. Hold on, let me try that again. We only do this every day. Pull it tight. Plug it in. So we don't short the cord out. Now we've got to fire up the generator. The first thing I'm going to do is start by cutting across the bottom. The bottom was already cracked most of the way through, so it really didn't take me that long to cut. Now that that's done, we're gonna move up to the top side. Man, you got all kinds of twisted, bud. They really weren't nice to you, were they? Now that we got that cut off, you can see that there's a lot of burrs on these edges. So we need to take care of that. Ooh, look at that one. That one's sharp. We're gonna cut all that off and clean all this up. While I'm getting set up for that, Justin found a piece of scrap metal that we can utilize, but it's a little bit bigger than what we need. So he's gonna use his tape measure and mark out, otherwise known as laying out, what he needs to cut and he's gonna begin cutting. Making sure to keep the chop saw all the way down until the blade is fully stopped. Great, so we have our piece cut to length, but now he needs to cut it down long ways using a combination square to mark it out. Here he is meticulously using a vertical bandsaw to cut this to our desired width. We're both pretty good at this, we do it a lot, so we're pretty good at cutting a straight line. But I'm gonna do my best to not be distracting to him because one wrong move and you could easily lose a digit. So while he's busy focusing on that, I'm going to work on cleaning up the ramp. Awesome, that looks really good. There's no more sharp edges. Justin's done with the new piece, so let's dry fit it. Chop that off. Pro tip, if you tie your cable and your extension cord in a loose knot in the way that I'm about to show you, it serves two purposes. The first and most important is that it helps prevent the plug from getting shorted. The second is that it prevents you from unplugging your cord from the extension cord whenever you pull on it. Just make sure you put the knot about six inches away from the plug. And also don't over tighten the knot, keep it loose. My brother accidentally overcut the piece. So we're gonna cut off the excess. Perfect, now our piece is ready to go. Let's start welding. Justin's gonna start by tacking one corner of the piece. Go ahead. By doing a tack weld in the corner of the piece, it allows us to pull the other end of the piece up and down so that we can make sure our piece follows the edge nice and cleanly all the way down. 
He will then put tack welds periodically every few inches as we make our way to the other end. Awesome. Now that we have the top done, Justin's gonna start tack welding across the bottom in the same manner. Now, because this ramp was being dragged across the concrete, it basically acted like an abrasive, shaving down the aluminum across the entire bottom of the ramp. But it actually shaved down more aluminum on the right side, causing a big gap. And when Justin got to this point, he didn't feel confident enough to fill the gap. So he handed the torch over to me. And I'm okay with that because I thought it would be a great opportunity to teach him how to do it. Before I start to tackle the gap, I need to make sure that the very end of the piece is properly secured to the rest of the ramp. And it's at this stage that I decided I'm actually gonna finish out the rest of the weld before I tackle the gap. There are gonna be a lot of people in the comments that criticize me because of the way that I am welding. They believe that you have to run this weld straight without stopping. The reality is that this aluminum is not perfectly clean because it's rubbing on the concrete in the dirt. And because of this, it is almost impossible to run a straight weld without stopping. I definitely try where I can, but you will see that I have to stop and start because I'm actually controlling my heat. See, all the dirt mixed in with the aluminum actually makes it more difficult to run just a straight weld. Additionally, there are some places along this weld that are thinner than others and it keeps varying in thickness because of the wearing down from the concrete. Welding aluminum is much more forgiving when it comes to starting and stopping as opposed to steel and stainless steel. This method of welding is actually referred to as bump welding and it's typically found in the marine industry where welders are welding anodized aluminum which requires this same very process. I used to work in the marine welding industry and this is where I learned it from. Some areas along this weld are easier than others. And right here, I seem to be getting a little bit more of an easy area to weld. I just have to finish buttoning up this side of the ramp and then we can move on to the gap. Although I could fill it with a giant glob of weld, I decided to cut a small sliver of sheet metal in order to fit the gap. By tacking this over the gap, it gives us a little bit of a structure to weld on top of instead of trying to weld over a big giant hole. Every day I go home and I tell my wife all about the big holes I fill while I'm away. <laughs> but she's not as easily amused as I am. Anyways, it seems to me that there are a lot of welders out there that are very intimidated by welding aluminum. TIG welding aluminum is a very difficult process and it takes a lot of time to learn and a lot of practice. It also takes a lot of patience. And did I mention practice? I started this channel because I am passionate about teaching people. About 10 years ago, I fell in love with welding, but specifically TIG welding aluminum. It's really hard to explain, but I'm just so passionate about it and I just wanna share it with everybody. Something though that I often think about is how previous generations used to pass down trade knowledge to one another. And not even just in the welding field. I mean, think about stonemasons or plumbers or electricians. All that knowledge has evolved over years and years and years and got us to where we are today. And in this country, we are actively watching as previous generations of tradesmen are dying off. And a lot of that knowledge that they had is dying off with them. So I'm trying to learn all of this knowledge that I possibly can in the welding industry and make these videos to share it with you guys so that we can continue passing this knowledge down to one another, maybe just in a different way. The cool thing about being in a trade is that you will never know everything. Trades are constantly evolving and constantly changing. So you have to learn to be adaptable. Additionally, if you can change your mentality to always be a student hungry for knowledge, you will learn so much more than you ever thought was possible. And who knows, maybe you'll eventually be the one passing down the knowledge one day. The major motivating factor for me to learn a trade to begin with, before I even thought about becoming a welder, was not necessarily about the money. It was more about the knowledge, because I realized in a trade, which is a learned skill, no one can ever take knowledge away from you. 
So you will always have work the rest of your life, even if you lose a job. You will always have that skill set to fall back on. And the better you get at that skill, the more money will follow. And that pretty much goes for any trade. All right, we got it all fixed up. It looks really good. The customer is going to be absolutely stoked about it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey, and I really hope you guys learned a thing or three. We got a lot more jobs on the schedule, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you guys have a piece of knowledge that you'd like to pass down, throw it down in the comments. I can't wait to read them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as I always say, if it's holding, it's golden.